welcome to Get Real with Chris and Mark. I'm Chris Hill, and this is Mark Frisco. And uh, how you doing, Mark? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> We're going to have some fun today. I, I guess. You know, it's funny. We're, we're, we're always so prepared for these podcasts, and we take weeks of <laughs> weeks of preparation yeah. and a whole crew of people. You that, know what would help with that? What's that? Everybody who's listening, get in the, ch- in the comment section right now and tell us what you want us to please, talk about. Please. Please give us please. some comments. Because otherwise we come up with crazy stuff. Like, what are we talking about today? You know what it is? The, wait a minute. Hold on. The biggest problem we have right now is we don't have a cocktail with us today. So that's, I, know. I think that's what's really throwing so us So if you want to bring us some cocktails, then we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll talk. Hit us we'll up. Talk. You can find us anywhere. Like, just you know, send a message to the Baynet comment section. You want to bring in some food or some drinks? Let's do it. Yeah, I'm sure we'll find something. We'll have something next time too. So yeah. we get some we get some people uh, coming in and some some new guests and some things like that, and we'll have lots of things to talk about. So what are we talking about today? We got a couple things. One of the things we're just going to talk about is um, let's talk about Elon Musk. Okay. All right. I don't even know. I don't even know what we're gonna say about Elon Musk, but um, somebody brought up that like all the news swarming around this whole Twitter change. It's pretty crazy. That. He like he tried to pull out of that deal because he realized it was a bad deal. Do you think that's why? And then they, I think so because Do you? The, yeah, because it, right after I think it was, I think it was part of a game it plan. Might, it might be. Who knows what that dude? But my understanding is that he was he was buying it, and then the stock price dropped substantially. Yeah. But he was locked into buying it at a much higher price. And you know they took him to like federal court or yeah, something and yeah. made him follow through with the purchase, which is pretty crazy in and of itself. Yeah. So he buys it, and then what's he do? Yeah, you know he's going really. Everybody fires leaving. everybody. Fires everybody. Which is hilarious. Uh, he goes in, he fires everybody, starts changing the rules, starts shifting stuff but around, you know, starts messing with people. Okay, so let, that this this is why this is good. It's a, it, you know what's funny is when I worked in the construction industry years ago, right? They would change your job, or you, you'd move from a job, one job site to another. And I remember I had this boss, right? And he, a great guy, and he would come into the he would come into the new job site, and the first thing he'd do is grab a trash can. And he'd bring it into the office and set it in the middle of the floor. And he wanted everything in the trash. Hmm. And and the reason I, and the reason he was very good at what he did. Right. But he wanted it done his way. He didn't care about anybody else's pathways. Yeah. I think that's the best way to do it. I mean, if you're a leader, you you, pre, you, you gotta have to, you gotta step in and take control. And, and do you think that's what? So so would you call Elon Musk a leader? That's a really great question. I guess. I think there's no doubt that that man is a leader. Okay. I mean, if he wasn't a leader, you're right. I get it. He's we wouldn't know his name. Right. So he's leading us right now. We don't even realize right, it. Right. right. No, you're right. We're, we're talking so about him. We're talking about him. And that's that's half the battle. So I definitely think he's a leader. And then on top of that, to accomplish the stuff that he's accomplished, it's pretty absolutely incredible. insane. Literally out of this world. Right. Insane. Literally, right. It's interesting. I think he has this um, unending creative side that is there's no limit to what he so basically never th- never think inside of a box right 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 i feel like he's the type that's like i'm gonna go for the moon literally he's a savant you know and uh i think that's been discussed and, and proven yeah. on on several instances now that you know that that folks say that he's, he's somewhere on the spectrum um and i think it's just such a beautiful testament to um what that means, you know, what that means for other people that might be someplace on the spectrum. And the fact that he is specially equipped to come here and and provide what he's provided for all of us, you know, the hope. And, you know, it, it's funny because at the same time, he's a goofy dude that does some wild stuff that tends to crack people up. He loves to toy with the news. He loves to toy with politics. He loves to break the system. And it's like you said earlier, it's like a game that he plays. One of the articles is why I just clicked on it. I saw it said, Elon Musk's backers cheer him on even if they aren't sure what he's doing to Twitter. <laughs> right? It's, it's so true. Funny. Everybody's like all for him. In which case, it's funny. Um, that was an NPR article. I remember, so I, I read his uh, biography, 
And um, when I was reading it, my wife was like, why are you reading that? That guy's a douche, you know? Yeah, right. And I, I was like, nah, man, this is – his story is absolutely amazing. You know, he came from fairly tough times. He was picked on as a child. Yeah. And, you know, and then came all the way through all that, like, getting beat up, like, with, like, sticks and stuff in school. Yeah. Like, it was really, really bad. Is and that what he, happened to you, Mark? He, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm out here fighting too. Yeah. No, it, it wasn't that bad, but <laughs> but it happened to all of us to some extent. Yeah, you no, know, I we've get it. All I totally get it. We picked on and bullied and all that stuff. That's the beautiful thing about it is, regardless of his past, look at what the man has been able no, to no, accomplish. No, no, no. I mean, it, you have to have respect for somebody like that, like period, so, like a, to some some level of. Respect. My wife, after I got done reading it, you know what she did? She read it. She read it, and she was like, "Holy shit, this guy's awesome!" Yeah, right. I'm right, like, right, yeah, right. I told you that's why yeah. I was reading it. So yeah. we don't know these people, right? We don't know them personally. We never, yeah. you know. And you just hear what the media tells you about them, and then you kind of go with that. But, but you, you gotta have. I mean, like, the media sucks. Yeah, it really you know? does, man. It ruins everything. It, it and does. I hope that that's not where we're headed. You know, with this <laughs> podcast, because let, let's get real, right? Right. Like the media sucks, I, and I can't stand it. I can't stand the fact that everything you know is is about um, everything is about a dollar. You By know, the way, is this the title of our of this one today? The media sucks. The is media that what we're gonna do? Sucks. The media sucks. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see that click. Hopefully, the Baynet will publish yeah. that. So. <laughs> but you know, the Baynet the Baynet's a better version of that because they're local. They're, pub- right. they're publishing local news. They're supporting local businesses. You know, they're hyper local. It's not. It's not owned by uh, you know right. Jeff Bezos. You know what I mean? Right. And he's not controlling what the Baynet right. says, right? And that's the unfortunate thing about the news. But the worst part is, is that we're, we're constantly spreading negativity, and that's what really sucks. Yeah, it does. And you know what? The worst part about it, it's not even the media's fault. Well, I... I you know whose fault it is? Yours me. and mine and everybody else's well, that gets we, on and reads it. we read it and buy it. We right? read it. Yeah. We click on it. We read it. We feed on that negativity, and it just... It, it sucks. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. Like, I wonder if, like, you have these po- you know, positive stories, if they have the same impact as a negative story. If you, you know, I'm sure there's been studies that say, you know, with the title of a pod- positive title versus yeah. a negative title. We've, I don't know how we fix that, but it, it really does suck. Well, because because right. they wanna, what happens? What happens, right? What did I say earlier? You know, we wanted to talk about Elon, and I'm like, well, do you think that he's the hero or he's the right. devil? Right, Where do you think I got that from? Yeah. I got it from the media. Right, it's funny. So it's like, is Elon the devil? I'm like, oh, I'm going to click and read that. You know? <laughs> it's horrible. You're reading is Elon the devil. That's yeah. the funniest thing ever. <laughs> but but I think if you saw it pop up, you'd probably, you'd probably click, click on it, on it and look at it, too. right? It's, like, it's so, that clickbait thing, right? I mean, like, everybody clicks on it to read that kind exactly. of stuff. Exactly. Well, let's get back on topic. What's yes. this fool been doing with Twitter? He acquires Twitter and, and all sorts of craziness. Now he's a reinstalled Donald Trump's Twitter account. And that apparently. made a bunch of people mad, right? A lot of people mad. Um, a lot of people happy, right? Yeah. A lot of people mad, a lot of people happy. Um, and then he f- goes in and fires, or a lot of people get fired. I think a huge percentage of the people get fired from Twitter. Of the company? Yeah, of Twitter. Which, honestly, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if that's that big of a deal, really. I mean, For him honestly, to get in clean house. Clean house and yeah. come in and say, I'm just going to... Well, I think you know. so, too, because I think that part of the reason with Twitter, and the reason why he said that he wanted to acquire it, which I think this is what cues into that, like, he's either our savior or he's the devil, right? <laughs> because, you know, the reason why he said he wanted to it was to protect free speech and a lot of what Twitter was doing previously and the, you know, those employees at Twitter were doing previously where they were censoring free speech, which is exactly what they, they banned the president of the United States or maybe not when he was president. Well, but they, right. they banned him after he was a president, which censorship is not the way to go, you know, and. I'm sorry, but I'd rather I'd rather hear you know and decipher what comes from you know Donald Trump's mouth and anybody else that wants to post on there than you know somebody who owns a news organization. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that's always got me. It's like you know I think that the the we as Americans have been dumbed down because to the extent of we the media doesn't believe we can make our own choices. Right. Nobody so gonna, believes we can make nobody, our own choice. And their government, they're right, our government definitely doesn't feel right. that way. Right. But so, and the problem is, I want, I want to make my own decisions. I want to. I want to hear directly from the source. I want to hear about. what they're saying. Right. And you know what? Like, all right, okay. If you want to believe that, you know, Donald Trump is a crazy person, and you know, that's your right to do so. Right. 
And why not have the right to hear what he has to say? But when you have a company like Twitter that comes in and tries to block that, that's un-American. Well, right. It's, it, it, it's plain and simple. Yeah, I mean, the, the question then becomes, like, and we could also, this is a whole other conversation, too. Like, what, does, you know, a private company have the right to do what they want to do? Like, I mean, you can have radical opinions and you can have a group of people that, like, for example, if, if you don't like what Twitter does, you don't have to be on Twitter. That's right. Right? Yep. Like, I mean, that's the thing. You don't like you don't like what they're saying or what they're doing. You don't have to be on it. Right, right. You know, and it's the same with any of those. They're social media platforms, right? Like, that's what they're supposed to be. Yeah, that's true. The question is, is, like, Twitter, like, has become, like, it, do you get your news from Facebook and Twitter? Right. Right, and that's the problem. We've co- co- commingled social activities with to news, the, to activities. news activities. And at the same time, you shouldn't trust the news source. You shouldn't just trust one source either. Right. <laughs> what one person has. You need to verify for yourself. You know what you believe is is what you believe. And but I mean, I, I, I see the I see the challenges there, though. As I sit I here and I reel it, I mean, I, I see the challenges because you know somebody with uh, access to a platform at a high level could have major influence, and you know right. I think that's the best part about fact checking, yeah. right? So I do like the fact that Twitter does the fact check, yeah. whereas somebody says something, they'll actually fact check whether well, but, or not it's know, real. But, yeah, but Mark, the problem I have with that is like. Who's fact checking the fact checker, right? Uh, you know what I mean. Like that's, that's true. you know, like you're, you know, that's the information. Well, that's what Elon has done in some uh, cases. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Well, no, that's he's he's actually he's fact checked some stuff that, you know, yeah. that needed to be fact checked, and and previously, you know, that fact checker was being used in the opposite fashion, right? Where it was fact checking things that, um, the the fact checker needed to be. Yeah, checked. Yeah, right, so, right. I say that five times. I know fast. I couldn't even say it once. So, so, so what else has he done? I, I know that. Uh, so he reinstated Trump's um, Twitter account. Yeah. Wasn't there a chick that changed her name to I uh, uh, something Christmas? I love Christmas or something. I don't know the story. He made a rule that um, he made a rule that you couldn't change your name. Like you once your name was set, you couldn't change it again. So apparently, like right after he bought it, my wife tells me all this stuff. Okay, it's kind of like all that social media news is like the new tabloids. I'm you looking know? for it right now. <laughs> so it was Doja Cat says a whispering voice from the corner of the room. What'd she change it to? I think it Christmas. I, it was I love Doja Christmas. Doja Cat gets stuck with Twitter name Christmas. Christmas. Later <laughs> asked right. Elon Musk for help. <laughs> Yeah, she asked for help because she changed her name and she wasn't able to change it Twitter is testing, that's interesting. This is so fascinating. Okay. Because I guess he changed the policy to where you couldn't change your name again. Because oh, that I was see. another issue where people were changing their names, you know, frequently and, and being like imposters and stuff I like see. that. So, to me, yeah. that makes sense, right? Like you're trying to protect the, the platform a yep. little bit for not changing names. Any other funny stuff he's done with Twitter? I, you know, I, I wanted to talk about him and, and what he, you know. <laughs> I think, so going back to the story of Elon, I, I think that he's an amazing person. And I think that the one thing that he should provide, like him or not, okay, just look at the track record. Look at what the man has been able to accomplish. And I think that it should provide hope. Because if you look at his backstory and where he came from, it tells you that it doesn't matter where you come from or what you want to be or where you want to go. If you put your mind to it, anything is possible. And yeah. look, I do believe in his case, he has a, he has a, a, a gift from God, you know, his talents and his ability, I think, are far beyond what some of us have the ability to do. And I think that he's used that gift to the maximum of his cap- capability well, to do what he's done. I think once you get to a point of financial, for him, once he reached a point of financial stability, we'll call it, whatever it freedom. is. Freedom. Right? Freedom. And Now that, he can do whatever the heck he yeah, wants. He, and he, he can and, buy Twitter as a toy. Right, and he can be, his, <laughs> so, and he can be $44 billion. Right. Right by himself. And whatever. Just, you know, it's my toy. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because it does, I feel like it opens him up for uh, to be whatever it is he a wants. A world of possibility. Yeah. yeah. And without that freedom, financial freedom, I don't think we'd hear. So a good mentor know, of mine. Like this is a good conversation to dive into, and maybe we'll have to, um, you know, do some other segments on stuff like this because this is the kind of stuff that I love, right? I'm yeah. constantly working on personal development, yeah. trying to find ways to be better in business, better as a person, a better saver, better father, right. husband, son, right. brother, the whole nine yards, right? So one of my mentors shared with me 
we were having a conversation and we were going over our uh, profit and loss in our personal budget. Personal budget is uh -huh. where we actually track our net worth yeah, to it. see where we're at. And he said, so for you guys, myself and my other callmates, he said, so what is the number? What is the number that makes you feel comfortable? And is it a number in the bank or is it a cash flow number? And I really had to sit and think. Yeah. And so I came up with my, my number's a cash flow number. Okay. So if, if I know that I'm guaranteed to get X dollars a month right. in cash, then I could do whatever I want with whatever's left. Got it. And I think that we all have to identify what that is. And you should be chasing. It's the Powerball. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I guess for me, I'd take the monthly. Yeah, know? I know. Right, right. I mean, I guess it, with that billion dollar one is like $500,000 yeah. a month. I like, know. Okay. okay I, I'm okay with that. That's I'm cash good with flow. That. That's Half cash mil a flow. month, I, I could roll on that for a while. So, so anyways, um, I think everybody needs to identify what that looks like for them. You know, how much cash do you need to have? And I don't want you to overthink it either because it doesn't need to be like $20 million. But to be able to focus on doing the things that you love to be who you want to be. Right, right. Right? Right. And we all got to have that number. That number, whatever that is to you or anybody else, um, that number changes your world and changes other people's worlds too, Correct. right? Because it lets you be the fullest you you can be at that point, yeah. right? Well, it lets you be the fullest that you can be in giving back financially. Right, and whatever giving, it is, right? And giving and, and giving back advice, you know, the things right. that you've been able to learn. Right. And, 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 and this and, and your, your brain yeah. and your function. And this and spread hope. I mean, so another thing that we talk about often in my coaching program is like, what is your why? Yeah. So for we me, that, yeah, all, yeah. So you, you're coach too, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, of course, right. So for me, uh, it, it's you know I've gone through years of asking that question. Yeah, and, and it changes. And it changes. It does. And you know the easy, honest answer is like, oh, my kids and my wife right, and right, all right, that right, kind right. of stuff. Well, yeah, of course. But I think that the deeper for me is that it's just to have impact. Yeah. You know, I had this conversation yeah, with my team yeah. a while back when you know we were talking about uh, Thanksgiving. So we were talking about Thanksgiving, and I'm like, look, our theme for this week is just to spread and share gratitude. And hopefully you've listened this long. Hopefully you get this message because, again, my goal is to have impact, and I, I want to have an impact on as many people as well, I it, can. So Right, and that's a life's intention, right? Right. Like that's what it's about. It's yeah. about having so it's a life's intention. Knowing why you get up every day and yep. why you do what you do. So, so for me, I told my team, I was like, look, it's Thanksgiving week. Everybody we talk to, I want to share one thing that we're grateful for right. for them. So for you, Chris, yeah, I am grateful for you for bringing me into this podcast. Oh, that's awesome. And honestly, so we've been friends a long time, just kind of acquaintances. Yeah. And I feel like this has just expanded on our friendship. I, I totally agree with that, actually. And I love this time together. I love what we're doing. And without you, it would have never happened. Well, I, so no, thank I appreciate you. that. And I, I, I'm grateful that, the, honestly, I'm grateful for this too, Mark, because I think, and I, I share that same sentiment. Like, we've known each other a long time. Right. And... Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why or what, but now I, I feel like that uh, that friendship and relationship is growing, and it's good. Yeah, it's a good thing. And, exactly. Uh, I, I think without this, we wouldn't have had that opportunity. So exactly. That's all. I'm grateful man. for that too. But so, so with that said, all this sappy crap. If you've listened that far, even though Thanksgiving happened, tell the people around you that you're grateful for them and why, because yeah. we don't do those things enough. Right. So it's just like everything else we talk about. We don't think about what our number is that we need to have. Right. We don't share gratitude. We don't share love. We feed on negativity. Like, this is real life. Yeah. So the only way to change it is to change it. If we go from the beginning of this podcast to yeah. the end, we have like... Complete, where did we go? Where, we went from like all <laughs> over this planet where on conversation. Go? But, but you know, from Elon Musk to... To gratitude. gratitude. But, and we but, should all be grateful for Elon Musk? <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. We should, well, jury's still out, right? right we'll see. Savior of the devil, we're not sure. Right. <laughs> but we should be grateful. Thus far, we should be grateful. Yeah. Here's somebody who has been able to stand up, you know, to anything that gets thrown at him. You know, there is no establishment that right. he's not scared to stand up to. The man sent his satellites to Ukraine to give them <laughs> internet yeah. while they're fighting a world war. That, or not a world war, it's well, not, oh, Lord. hopefully that was not Freudian, yeah. all right? Let's not go there. Good Lord. So, listen, but for real, like, that is what the man was capable of because of where he's at. We should be grateful for not just his ability to do that, but his ability to be an example for all of us of what can be accomplished. It really does put into motion that like any person can be the change, right? Yeah. 
you can be the change for your world. Yep. Right. And and it goes back to you know the the conversation about the the bridge jumper and that kind yeah. of thing. You know, and that you can change thing. that person's life. And you can you know you can have an impact on someone and not even know it really. I yep. mean, it's really and and it's our job to. I mean, you don't even have to, like I said, you don't have to recognize it. Just be the best you you can be, I guess. Yep. And just be the best version of yourself. Yeah. I think if you're always striving to do that, um, you're headed to the right place. And yeah. if you're not striving to do that, call me or call Chris, yeah, right. and we'll kick you in the butt, right. and we'll find a way for you to be the best version of yourself. Yeah, that's so true. All right? But uh, it's true. I mean, I, I'd, I'd give that advice all day long. Yeah. I would stop what I'm doing in a heartbeat to help somebody right where they're at. Yeah. And, and I mean that from the bottom of my yeah. heart. So. No, I get it, man. Yeah. So well, look, Elon yes. to Twitter to gratitude and and, and more. Media and TV and everything yeah. is a mess. So. Thanks for tuning in to Chris and Mark shooting the shit. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're doing <laughs> oh, today. Oh, sorry. This is called Get, Get Real. Get Real, right. Yeah. We should have probably renamed yeah. it. And you can find us on? Oh, you did it to me. You got me. <laughs> on the baynet.com slash podcast. You can find us on the uh, Baynet Facebook page. On Spotify, on Amazon Music, on YouTube. Yes, YouTube's the one we always forget. Uh, we always forget YouTube. Yeah. But. Sponsorship. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, we got to talk about this sponsorship that we got. So we, our friendship's grown, and we've, we've started working together, and we're actually co-listing some properties. Yeah, so uh, we uh, are good friends over at Mark Homes. Um, gave us the opportunity of – we. Well, the real story is Chris and I found out we were competing right. for the same listings, and I was like, dude, we shouldn't do that. So we decided right. to band together. worked well because we're under the same brokerage. Right. So we teamed up um, for seven townhouse units, seven remaining townhouse units uh, at Clark's Rest in Leonardtown. So, um, Which is yeah. awesome, by the way. Clark's Rest is Beautiful. Oh, it's amazing! It really is the, a nice. The Winter Town lifestyle is awesome. Look, you can yeah. you can catch the trolley ride right. in the town, have some beers, have some dinner, catch the trolley home, walk to, walk to your house. It's awesome. And the club the clubhouse there in Clark's yep. Rest with the pool and the playgrounds is actually really really yep. nice. And, and close proximity to everything. I, I think the lifestyle is just fantastic. And these units, these townhouse units, are the largest townhomes around right now. Right. Um, they're twenty four feet wide, twenty four hundred square with foot garages. finished space. Yeah. With a 24 foot wide garage right. on a townhouse, which right. is crazy. Plus, off street parking, four cars in right. the driveway behind the townhouse. There's only seven left. You gotta, gotta go check them out. Right. You All do. Right. You do. I mean, they're a great deal. I want to, one, one last thing. I was doing the open house this weekend and I saw so many people because it ties into Leonard's Grant community as well. Yep. And there were so many people wa walking, hiking, biking, walking their dogs through there. That lifestyle is really pretty cool. Yeah. It's the way that the world should be. Right. Which we'll have, to, like, we'll have to cover that another day about new construction yeah, I get and all it, that yeah. kind of craziness. But, but listen. Yeah, go see it. Go see us, us at Clark's Rest in Leonardtown. We're usually there Saturday or Sunday from right. 11 to 2. But And lastly, if you're still listening after this uh, diatribe on Elon Musk and everything yeah. else, um, just share with us any ideas you might have for a podcast. If there's something you want to talk about. Um, we need to get into some local issues here soon, too. We're going to do that next time, I think. Yep. T share with us what you want to talk about because we want to hear. Yeah, that's right. So, all right. With see that, you next time. See you next time.